Hey everyone, Vi Farley here, getting a breakdown of the FCS championship game. Uh, Eastern Washington Eagles playing the North Dakota State Bison, undefeated 14-0, going for their seventh national championship in the last eight years, uh, North Dakota State. But they're playing Eastern Washington, a very, very tough team. This is going to be a great game, uh, of which I am going to break down for you here in just one second. First, before I get into that, let me say uh, thank you to subscribers, those of you who have followed me here for the last year. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Check out my other picks, check out my other videos, on my other uh, game breakdowns. Um, feel free to look around, but I uh, appreciate you uh, tuning in this time. And also, uh, again, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe if you like the content. So, <clears throat> let's break this one down. First of all, if you're wondering about this game and what's in it for you to watch on this game, this is a very underrated game as far as viewership and, and the importance of it. Um, there are 157 FCS football players in the fo National Football League right now. Um, you will see several NFL future prospects on that field uh, come Saturday uh, the 5th. <clears throat> Eastern Washington right now has five NFL players. Uh, North, North Dakota State has six NFL players uh, all playing in the NFL, most notably Carson Wentz, uh, starting for the Eagles. Uh, Eastern Washington has Cooper Cup, um, who was having a great season until the torn ACL. Um, they have Kendrick Bourne. Uh, they have Samson Ibukum, also playing for the Rams. Uh, they soon to have Bo Levi Mitchell, who's won two Grey Cups, looking to come down and play in the NFL this next year, working out with the Giants. So a lot of NFL prospects are coming out of the FCS. It's becoming more notable to pick out the best talent and uh, get them into the NFL, get them an opportunity, give them a shot. So and you're going to see some of the two of the best here with North Dakota State and Eastern Washington. So at the end of this, I'm going to have a best bet for you. Um, one way I think is the best way to play this game, uh, including taking a look at the spread uh, as well as the total, and then concluding with that uh, best play. So let's take a look at these teams a little bit, break them down. So Eastern Washington, 12-2 and two on the season. Those two losses are kind of unique. Let me point them out to you because I was at the Washington State game as well as something to note for the Weber State game. At Washington State, uh, the, the total may be a little deceiving. They lost 59 24. However, under the Leach offense of Washington State, they don't run the football. So when you have a lead and you're looking to run the clock out, they pass the clock out. Um, so a lead ends up becoming more than just the 10 points. If you can't stop that pass, which Eastern did not do a good job of doing, that ends up running the score up to something like 59 to 24. Not to mention a late turnover, a kickoff fumble, ends up running the score up to another 14 points there in the last fourth quarter. That was a one-score game, though, in the second half. So don't let that quite deceive you so much. Now, the other one is uh, Weber State. They lost 14-6. to six. But the significance of that is the fact they only scored six points against Weber State, which is a good defense. But that was Eric Berry's first start uh, of the season. He had one start the year before due to a suspension to Gage Gubrud, but Gage Gubrud was the starting quarterback of Eastern Washington at the year's beginning. He went out due to injury against Southern Utah. In comes Eric uh, uh, Barrier. Ever since then, he has not put up anything less than 30 points a game at 38, 48, 59, 74, 42, 34, uh, and 50. So um, Eric Barry has done a fantastic job, but to have him at Weber State in Utah, going against uh, uh, one of the best defenses on his first start was really, really a tall task. So we kind of hold that one aside as a little unique. <clears throat> Let's jump over to North Dakota State. North Dakota State has played a fair schedule, but not the toughest one they've p faced in the past. They did not face a Division I opponent like they have in the past, a, t a traditional FBS like an Iowa um, or one of the MAC schools like they have in the past. Um, so it's a little bit of a lighter schedule, even though they went 14-0. Also to note, I have gone through all of the st major statistics you can possibly go through on these two teams. North Dakota State has the edge of most of those categories. Um, there's not many that they don't have an edge on. Um, that said, Eastern Washington will be the toughest opponent they face this year, I believe, in my opinion, in my biased opinion. Um, to lay 14 would be very difficult. Eastern Washington has faced tough opponents similar to that of North Dakota State, like a UC Davis, who came in uh, undefeated or with one loss, might have had one loss, sitting at the top of the big sky, and they beat them 59-20. to 20. Um, 
Since then, there's not been. They had to face them again, which was a tough game, and it was very close. However, they have stepped up to the plate down the stretch against these tough teams. Nickel State was a good team. They won by 21. Maine is supposed to be one of the best defenses in all of S FCS coming into that game. They won 50 to 19. Um, so they haven't been afraid to step up to these uh, more difficult challenges and uh, end up performing very, very well. That said, North Dakota State is worthy of a 14-point spread. If you were to go across the games, there's only two games the entire season. A 14-point spread would not have been a cover by North Dakota State. One, Youngstown State. The other one, South Dakota State, which they end up following up with another game against South Dakota State and winning, winning by 23. So what does that mean in the end? On a neutral field down in Frisco, Texas, 14, I think, is a little too many, and here's one of the reasons why. If the public were to look at this game, they look at North Dakota State, they see Carson Wentz coming out of there, and they see they've won six of the last seven years as a national champion. Why would they not be a 14-point spread and cover uh, that 14, which they have done so many times this season? There's a lot of positive reinforcement with going North Dakota State. Meanwhile, Eastern Washington hasn't been there since 2010. Um, they lost Cooper Cup as well as two other receivers to the NFL. Um, this was supposed to be actually a rebuilding year with a new coach, with Coach Best. This is now his second season, but still it was supposed to be a ramp up to next year, which is when they're really supposed to hit their stride. But it seems it's been this year that they've really hit that stride. So if when it comes to the 14, I'm willing to lay the 14 or willing to uh, grab the 14 points with Eastern Washington. However, that's not the best play that I see. All right, so let's check this out. Total is set at 60 and a half. 60 and a half for Eastern Washington, North Dakota State. How many times has 60 and a half been breached in the last, what, 11 national championships? Check it out. Last year, the total was 30. 2017, it was 30. Year before that, 42. Year before that, 47. Year before that, 56. 42, 52, 23, 39, 44, 31. It has never, never been breached 60.5. And that includes six times being North Dakota State, one time being Eastern Washington games in that national championship game, and still 60 and a half has not been breached. Do you think we've had good offenses? Of course we have. But let's take a look at these two defenses. North Dakota State has given up, let's see, how many times have they given up over 20 points? Let's play that game. How many times have they given up more than 20 points in a game? In 14 games, it's only happened twice. Only happened twice. Eastern Washington and their 14 games, nine times have they held their teams under. So it's only happened uh, five times Have the, has the opponent uh, gotten over 20 points Um in those games, and most of them are right at 20, 23, 21, 29 um, in each one of them. So it's really difficult to score in these two teams. Now, check out one of these stats. Like I said, I was going through all these stats for uh, the FCS to see where they ranked. Check out this stat. North Dakota State's red zone defense has given up, what during a, an opponent, opponent visit to the red zone, 50% of the time is a score. Only 50%. The time it's a score. 22 red zone attempts, seven touchdowns, four field goals, only 11 scores. That is incredible. It's incredible that there's only been 22 red zone attempts. It's even more incredible that only 11 of those came out as a score. Eastern Washington is good at 73%, but North Dakota State's is just incredible. Um, Eastern Washington... 41 attempts to the red zone, 24 touchdowns, 6 field goals, 30 total scores. That said, like I said, often overlooked how good the defenses are going into this game versus the offense. People point out how good those offenses are. But when we're going on a neutral field, big game, we want to establish the run. Both of these teams are running offenses. So they want to establish the run early, um, wear down the other team so they can control the second half. I think this is going to be uh, much more defensive than what the numbers may seem. Um, I do look forward. I, unfortunately, I think North Dakota State is going to win this one. However, um, I'm going to be laying the four or uh, grabbing the 14 points with Eastern Washington. But the biggest best bet that I think is a great play here is under 60 and a half. 
I would grab this one early because I think it's going to get bet down. I think Sharper Money knows this uh, and it's going to be played down from 60 and a half. Uh, so I would grab it while you can before it drops below that. All right. Good luck, everyone, on this game. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and uh, check out my other videos out there. Good luck, everyone. See you again soon.